All right, guys, so today we're going to be reading about the Dishes Forest. Does anybody want to share with us what you already know about the forest? It's a rabbit and dog. Yeah, there's a food chain involved with the forest. What starts off our food chain? Who's the producer? It's plants. The plants, definitely. And what do the plants need to survive? Sunlight. Sunlight. But they didn't have any sunlight till it died. That's right. So the producer, being our plants, depends on sunlight. What do our consumers, our first level consumers depend on? What do they eat, Marcus? Grass. Yeah, they eat the grass, right? Our second level consumer, who are they? Can anybody tell me? Go ahead, it's a... A wolf. A wolf. A wolf is a good example of a second level consumer. And what does he need to survive? What does he eat? He Careful. Rabbit. Rabbit, right? He goes and eats the rabbit. All right, so you guys definitely have a good base, a good foundation to build your understanding on. But I want everybody paying attention because we're going to be going over this in small groups, okay? Deciduous Forest, Level H.I. by Kathy Stogler. Illustrated by Katherine Schwab. A biomimic group of plants and animals that live together. A polar bear lives in a cold biome. A cactus grows in a hot biome. All plants and animals have a special place where they live and grow. That special community is called a biome. And the way that plants and animals depend on one another, we call it what, guys? Biome. That is where they live. But what do we call how they depend on one another? Food chain. Food chain, that's right. It's all... Scientists have named eight different biomes around the world. Scientists group these biomes by the climate. Some places are dry, some wet. Some places are cold, some hot. Scientists also look at the plants and animals that live in each biome. Guys, in each biome, are the plants and animals all the same? Yes. You sure, Miracle? Can no. animals in a forest survive no. in the tundra? No. No, right? No. They all adapt differently, guys. So let's find out which animals are part of our forest. A deciduous forest is one biome. The eastern part of the United States is part of the deciduous forest biome. Deciduous trees lose their leaves and so, After our reading, let's revisit. What's a food chain? Can anybody tell me? Um, I, I Exactly. So, Freddie, is a food chain the way plants and animals depend on one another, or is it a way of tying things down? Plants and is it plants and animals? That's right. Okay. So, everybody, write down food chain. That's going to be our term we're working with today. Food chain. Food chain on the top. Write it on the top. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. A food chain. A food chain. It's a big It's very rainy today. That's right. Okay, guys. So let's talk about the food chain in the forest. Do you guys recall the reading we did today? Uh, I. Yeah. You remember? Do you remember the reading that I read today about the forest, Freddy? Yeah. You remember it? Yeah. Okay, so let's start from the bottom, guys. Our producer. What is this, guys? What is this an example? A grass. A grass. And is a grass a plant or an animal? A plant. A plant. So let's write down first, because we know that's what starts it off. A little number one. And we're going to write a plant. Yeah, and I want you guys to draw your own example of a plant. So you guys can draw a little grass or a little flower, okay? So we know what starts off our food chain. All right, guys. Before we reveal our picture, who eats this grass? Who's our first level consumer? Me. Do you eat the grass? Who eats it, Freddy? Sit down. Tell me, Freddy. From which of these two animals can eat the grass? And the rabbit. The rabbit, that's right. So here's how our food chain is looking, right? At the bottom, we have our grass, right? Yeah. 
And depending on her grass, that's right, the rat eats the grass. So, second in our food chain is our rabbit. So, I want you to write rabbit. R A. Yes. A. B. B. I. C. Rabbit. Okay? The rabbit eats the grass. That's right, the rabbit eats the grass. And is that where our food chain stops, or is there something above the rabbit? Above the rabbit. There is something above the rabbit. What is it, Marcus? Can you uh, tell me? Like a wolf. A wolf. Yeah, a wolf is definitely a good example, right? So what does the wolf need to survive? Meat and what else? That all these things need. All of us are united by that one need. Water. Water. That's right, guys. So we're starting to build up our food chain. So right? Third. And our third level, the consumer, is our what, Freddy? Who is this guy? Oh, uh, the bear. That's a what? Uh, that's a, oh, that's a, is it a rabbit or a wolf? A wolf. That's a wolf, that's right. So second is the wolf. This one is, uh, this one. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes up our the dishes for us, right? All of these depend on one another to survive, making the biome. Yeah, and the is, yellow trees. Yeah, the yellow trees. Why do the trees turn yellow? Because uh, it's starting to turn to small, like the trees will start more off. Excellent, Marcus. Yeah, the seasonal changes, right? So yeah. as soon as it turns into fall, these trees start changing their colors and the leaves start to fall off, guys. And when the leaves are falling, the grass is running out. Our rabbit migrates. Do you guys remember that vocabulary? Yeah. What does migrate mean? Um, like, you like, wait, like, for a couple weeks or so? Close. That's hibernate. Migrate. It has to do with the food. When it runs out in one place, the rabbit does what? Um, hold on, Freddie. Pull that from the answer. It will go to the yard so try to get more food. Exactly. It'll move towards another place to try to get more food. All right? And if the rabbit moves, Freddy, so, would you mind focusing over here? Yeah. Thank you. If the rabbit moves to another so, place to follow its food, what is the wolf going to do in response? Oh, I'm to look for something else to eat. Yeah. So, do you think, Freddy, would the wolf follow the rabbit or will it stay in its house if it's hungry? It's hungry. If it's hungry, is it going to follow our rabbit for food? No. You don't think so? What do you think, Freddy? Okay, Freddy, if you're hungry, are you going to go look for food or are you going to stay home? I stay home. You're going to stay home? Yeah. Okay, you have a lot of willpower. How about you, Marcus? If you're looking for food, are you going to stay home or are you going to look for food? Um, I'm going to go and try to look for food. Exactly. So what do you think the wolf is going to do? Is it going to stay home or is it going to follow the rabbit looking for food? Um, Follow the rabbit. Follow the rabbit. That's right, guys. So that's how our food chain depends on one another. The little rabbit needs the grass to grow, right? If the grass isn't growing, it's going to go somewhere else to try to find it. And the wolf needs our little rabbit, right? That's why it's called the food chain. They depend on one another. They're all tied in. Does yeah. that make sense, guys? I want you guys to draw your own example of a food chain on the bottom, okay? So I'll draw it with you guys. We're going to write first level again, and we're going to draw a little example this time. So what's an example of a first